Hello, in this presentation I will talk about the Mion robot, a low-cost 3 degrees of freedom robot with a gripper. In particular, I will focus on describing how to implement a coordinated access control. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to explain some preliminary configuration steps that you must carry out in the Arduino IDE in case you use an ESP01 board and the PCA9685 servo controller as selected electronics to control the robot movements. Later, I will explain how to perform the individual access control with servos providing a function that will be later used no matter what if you use an Arduino Nano or an ESP01 board. At the end of the presentation, I will explain how to implement an access coordinated control with a cubic trajectory. Here I show the axis range to understand how the robot moves. Joint 1 rotates up to 180 degrees and it allows the arm to point to one specific direction, while joints 2 and 3 will be used to control the distance and height of the gripper. The gripper can be open or closed with the joint 4. Robot programming can be done using the Arduino IDE, which is the official interface for Arduino programming. I am assuming that you know how to develop a uh, uh, how this uh, development environment works, since it is really very simple to use. If you use to uh, use an Arduino Nano, you don't need to install any additional libraries, since Arduino IDE comes with all libraries you need. However, if you use the ESP32 or ESP8266 processors, then you need additional steps. Let's say, for instance, to configure the ESP01 board. That means that you need to install some set of dependencies on the Arduino ID. I recommend you to follow the steps indicated in the tutorial so you are able to program the processors. Arduino OTA is a library that will allow you to program the robot through Wi-Fi, but the first time anyway you will need to use the USB port, remember. If you use the PCA9685 servo controller, then you must install the library developed by Adafruit to work with it. On the right side of this slide, I provide you with code to create a data type that contains information to move any servo of the robot. Specifically, in the information provided, there's the pin number where the servo is connected to, also an offset angle in case you detect that you have to correct the servo position once assembled, and also it contains uh, fields for the minimum and maximum positions in degrees to limit some of the joint movements. In the code sample, I show how to instance a servo, in particular the one for the gripper, connected to pin 4. In order to move the servos uh, with the Arduino board, I use the servo library. The code provided on the left side implements a function named writeServo that will allow you to control the servo position of any servo, while the function detachServo will disconnect the servo to save some energy. On the other hand, if you use an ESP01 board, you must implement the writeServo and detachServo functions according to the code provided here. You also need to initialize the servo controller with the code provided on the right including this code inside the Arduino setup function to initialize the I2C communications with the servo controller and to set the control frequency to 50 Hz. The constants min PWM and max PWM are values that you might need to adjust. They are represent or they represent the time in microseconds for the minimum and maximum positions of the servo. And this might vary depending on the servo cell you have selected. Robot joints are controlled in position using an internal potentiometer. However, this is an individual control that may lead to an inadequate behavior because we cannot control the overall time that they take to reach the desired position. If you want to implement a coordinated behavior, being T, the overall time of the trajectory, describe it by all servos, then we can use a polynomial trajectory generator allowing to control not only the position of the servo but also indirectly the speed. If the trajectory is defined with a cubic expression like the one shown, 
and we also define some boundary conditions such as the position at the beginning and end of the trajectory and their speeds that have been set to zero. Then we have all the ingredients to compute the trajectory parameters as shown. The main advantage of using these trajectories compared to other options is that they are very simple to compute and at the same time they generate a smooth spill profile. Here I show how to implement a function in Arduino called moveAppsJ that replicates the movements of the moveAppsJ instruction in Rapid using EBB robots. In the video on the right, I show you a representative simulation to uh, show how it should work. As input arguments to the moveFJ function, we will need to provide the servo data that will be later provided to the write servo function as we have seen before. In addition to this, also an array with the current robot configuration will be provided, which is assumed to be known and will be used as the initial conditions for the polynomial trajectory. Also, we need to provide the target configuration and the, tra the trajectory time. Please bear in mind that servos need a minimum period of 20 milliseconds, so it makes sense to evaluate the trajectory at this sampling period and send new servo commands every 20 milliseconds. So please use the delay or milis instructions in Arduino to perform a real-time trajectory control. Your task now is to implement the code to perform a coordinated access control of the robot. In this presentation, I have explained how to implement a coordinated access control with a MiArm robot using a cubic trajectory. Thank you very much.